What's up everyone, Vitaly here with Hertz Instruments, and today we're gonna be talking about sample blending in Hertz drums. And we're gonna start with blending two snares, so let's dive right into it. Here we have a Reaper session with Hertz drums hooked up to the first track. And first thing to do is to switch the plugin to the multi outputs mode. To do that, I'm going to the routing page and clicking this multi out switch. As you can see, it changes the entire output configuration of the plugin. So now it's time to create the actual channels in the DAW. To do that, I'm right clicking the plugin name and selecting the option Build multi channel output for the plugin. Clicking Yes, and as you can see, it creates 16 channels in the DAW that are connected to the plugin's outputs. Okay, so now my main snare plays through the channel number 3. So I'm renaming it Snare Master. And for my second snare, I'm going to be using the cowbell pad. So I'm selecting it, and it's playing through the channel number 12. So I'm renaming it Snare Slave. Then I'm moving it up here, so that we don't get lost in our session. Okay, so now let's hear what our main snare sounds like. As you can hear, it's a low-tuned, pretty beefy, pretty dark sounding type of snare. So for our second snare, we're gonna be using something a little bit crispier, something, something a little bit snappier. So I'm selecting my cowbell pad, and from this drop-down menu, I'm selecting the snare option. And now we can click through some of those snares to find the one that fits. No. No, it's too low. Yeah, I think we'll go with this one. So let's load it up to the cowbell pad. And now it's assigned to our cowbell pad. Now we need to make sure that both our snares play together. To do that, I'm going to the MIDI mapping page, selecting my main snare, and checking what notes are assigned to the snare. So the idea is that we need to assign all the same notes to our cowbell pad. So on the snare, it's from D1 to A1, and C sharp 1 is reserved for the cross stick sample, and we're not going to be using that. Okay, so I have assigned the notes from D1 to A1 on the cowbell. Let's check it again. Yep, on the snare it's also from D1 to A1. Alright, now let's play a groove and see if it actually works. Yep, as you can see, both our snares are playing together, and it works just fine. Alright, now we need to make sure that both our snares are tuned to the same note. For that I'm gonna be using FabFilter Pro Q, but actually you can use any other type of software that can show the frequency spectrum from two audio sources and one graph. So I'm hooking up an instance of Pro-Q to my Snare Master channel. And also an instance of Pro-Q to my Snare Slave channel. Okay, now on my Snare Master channel, I'm going to activate the external frequency spectrum from my Snare Slave channel to see if they're in tune. Okay, so as you can see, the fundamental notes on those two snares are slightly misaligned. To fix that, we're going to be using the pitch slider in Hertz drums. So let's move it over here. Okay, let's select our second snare. And let's play around with the pitch slider until those fundamental frequencies align. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it looks and sounds just fine. Now let's see if it sounds any better with a phase inverted. No, we definitely shouldn't do that. Alright, now the final thing to do is to set up the volume and the ambience level on the second snare. So, let's start with the ambience. I like it around here. And I, I'll also trim it down a little bit. Alright. Sounds pretty good to me. Alright, so now let's blend in a second kick. We're gonna be using our tambourine pad as our second kick. So I'm selecting it, and I'm going to the routing page to route it out to a separate channel in the DAW. To do that, I'm opening up the outputs list, and I'm clicking 
the output number 16 with the command key held down or the alt key if you're on Windows. As you can see, it changes the outputs for the DI sub and effects signals to the channel number 16. Alright, so now let's go to the MIDI mapping page to make sure that both our kicks play together. So I'm selecting my kick right and checking what note is assigned to it. And it's C1. It means that I need to assign the same note to articulation 1 on my tambourine pad. So I'm resetting it and assigning the note C1 to it. And I'm also erasing the rest of the articulations because we're not going to be using them on the tambourine pad. Alright, now let's check if they actually play together. Yeah, as you can see, it works just fine. So now my main kick plays through the channel number 3. So I'm renaming it Kick Master. And my tambourine pad plays through the channel number 16. So I'm renaming it Kick Slave. And I'm moving it up there with the Kick Master. Alright, now let's go to the Lib Sampler page, select the tambourine, and change it to kick. Okay, now we're gonna be using this sample as our second kick, because I've used this combination before and I really like the way it sounds. So let's load it up to the tambourine pad, and let's play a groove to hear what it sounds like. Okay, let's try to invert the phase. Alright, so as you can hear with the phase inverted, we're getting a much fuller, much punchier sound. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Alright, let's close Hertz drums for now and hook up an instance of Pro-Q to our kick slave. And kick master channel. Now, on the kick master channel, I'm going to activate the external frequency spectrum from the kick slave. And as you can see, the fundamental notes on those two kicks are almost perfectly aligned, so we don't need to change the pitch on the second kick. Ok, let's return to Hertz drums. Now we can play around with the ambience panel on the second kick. And my idea is to get a roomier sound for my second kick. So I like it around here. And I want to trim it down just a little bit. Ok. Now that sounds awesome. So we can move over to our mixer tab and to this groups tab down here. So here you have this misc group channel where the second snare and the second kick are routed together. So we can actually mute this channel to hear the difference we've made. As you can hear, we have really brought the kick and the snare to the front, but I feel like I want to trim it down just a tiny bit to make it more consistent with the rest of the kit. Alright, so this is how sample blending works on Hertz drums. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward, yet very flexible, and it allows you to get all sorts of cool, unique sounds from the plugin. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more useful stuff. And I will see you later. Bye.